Pacemakers have come down in size for sure, but for over 60 years since the first implantable pacemakers were developed, they haven't really changed much. Well, not until now. In fact, the super clever new pacemaker system fits entirely in my hand. We'll talk about that in a bit though. In this video, which I partnered with Abbott, the popular medical technology company to help make, we're going to talk about exactly what pacemakers are, how pacemakers work, and how they've finally taken a leap forward in technology. Firstly, we need to discuss how the heart beats. The heart has four chambers, two atriums, a right and a left, and two ventricles, also right and left. Blood enters the heart through the right atrium from the body, moves into the right ventricle, then goes into the pulmonary arteries in the lungs where it picks up oxygen, then it goes back into the heart through the left atrium into the left ventricle, and then pumped back out through the body, and the cycle continues. Now these movements happen because of an electrical system within the heart coming from the sinus node that sends an electrical impulse through the heart across both atrium, causing them to contract, which pushes blood from both of these chambers into the two ventricles. That electricity continues to move and is absorbed by the AV or atrioventricular node, which causes a purposeful slow movement of the current through the AV node, creating a pause, allowing the blood to move into the ventricles. Then the electrical pulse continues into the ventricles, causing them to contract and push the blood in them out of the heart into the lungs and rest of the body and this cycle continues. Various conditions can cause that complex electrical system to not fire correctly and not beat at the correct pace. In some of these cases, after the patient consults a physician, of course, a pacemaker, aka an artificial way of regulating the electrical current in the heart or pace of the electrical current might be useful. So what is a pacemaker? and how do they work? A traditional pacemaker consists of a pulse generator, generally implanted under the clavicle between the skin and the muscle of the pectorialis major. This results in a small lump sticking out slightly from the patient's chest. Now this device contains all of the electronics and battery for the pacemaker system. And then we have one or two wires or leads coming out of that, going through the subclavian vein and into the heart. In the case of the one lead type, this is when one of the chambers, usually the right atrium or ventricle, isn't contracting properly. So the lead is then usually screwed in place inside the chamber and the pulse generator can then send a small electrical current to stimulate that muscle in the heart to contract. Some pacemaker patients have a one lead system like this, but the majority will need two leads. In that case, one goes into the atrium and one into the ventricle to make sure that both parts, not just beat and contract, but do so in the correct rhythm or pace like the sinus and the AV nodes would help them do. Beyond sending that electrical pulse to contract the muscle and pump blood through the heart, the leads can also sense when the heart contracts and use that data to determine when to send the electrical pulses as they are needed. So if the patient starts to run or do something that requires a faster heartbeat, it can tell and it increases and decreases the heart rate as needed, again, like the heart's natural pacemaker system would work. The thing is that this traditional system, which has come a long way since the original back in 1958, hasn't fundamentally changed in over 60 years. They all work the same way as what we just explained. The Avair VR, one device for one chamber, and the Avair DR system, dual device for two chambers, are smaller than AAA batteries, and everything from a traditional pacemaker is contained inside. No wires, no pouch in the chest. Instead, a physician can use a minimally invasive catheter-based procedure to go in through a small incision and into the heart. Avair has a helix fixation mechanism on the end, and once inside the heart chamber, it is twisted to affix to the heart's muscle wall. The small device has electrodes to sense the heartbeat, as well as send the electrical pulses to contract the heart. Furthermore, through the unique helix design, it allows for future retrieval of the device should therapy need to evolve or if the device needs to be replaced in the future. So what if you have the Avair DR, the dual chamber system, as again, most people who need a pacemaker actually need one that regulates two chambers in the heart. How do the two devices communicate if there are no wires? Similar to a WAN or wide area network, like your Wi-Fi at home, for example, there is a body area network that the human body can use. Essentially, a series of electrical pathways exist throughout the body for the body to send electrical signals as needed. For example, if you place electrodes on your chest, they can be used to record the electrical activities of your heart. This is how an EKG works. The Avair DR, with its first of its kind eye to eye or implant to implant technology, uses high frequency pulses to relay messages via this pathway across the muscle of the heart to send electrical signals that are below 
below the threshold for electricity to cause the heart muscles to contract back and forth between the two devices so they can know what is happening in each of the chambers and adjust the beating of the chambers as needed. This communication between the two devices through the band is ultra reliable and uses a hundred times less energy than trying to use a radio frequency and it isn't subject to interference like RF is. How freaking clever is that? There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed learning from all of the scientists and physicians at Abbott. Uh, if you want to learn more about what they're doing in medical technology, check them out at the link below. Let me know in the comments though what you thought of this video, if you liked it, if you learned something from it. Should I do more like this? We'll love to hear from you guys. And if you're not subscribed, please do so and ding the bell so you get notified when I do more Decoder episodes like this, the explainer series here on the channel. And now I'm going to get another coffee and I'm going to try my best not to think too hard about the body area network and like the electricity just running around your body all the time. <sighs> Crazy. Oh yes, the unmistakable sound of a siren getting closer and closer. Plane isn't contracting, contracting, contracting. The wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. Isn't contracting, <laughs> did it again.